This is the first set of notes for Unit 5, which is about cellular respiration and photosynthesis. This particular section of notes will be about the introduction to the process of cellular respiration and the first stage in the process, which is called glycolysis. We'll also talk about anaerobic um, respiration, which is called fermentation. So all cells undergo various kinds of energy transformations. Of course, photosynthesis is one example of this. It takes carbon dioxide and water and along with light energy, changes it into uh, glucose and oxygen. Uh, this is a, an endergonic reaction. It is absorbing energy, like we talked about in the last unit. Cellular respiration is basically the opposite of photosynthesis. It takes the glucose and the oxygen and changes it into carbon dioxide and water and releases the energy. This is an exergonic reaction, like we talked about in the last unit. It releases energy. Now you often hear breathing called respiration as well. That's breathing is the intake of oxygen and release of carbon dioxide. And it is related to cellular respiration. But when we talk about respiration in biology, generally speaking, we're talking about this biochemical process, cellular respiration, taking glucose and releasing energy from it rather than breathing. So the process of cellular respiration is divided into three phases. The first is called glycolysis. The second is called the Krebs cycle, also called the citric acid cycle. And the third is the electron transport chain. In glycolysis, glucose is split into two three carbon molecules called pyruvate or pyruvic acid and releases two ATP molecules of energy. The Krebs cycle, which occurs in the, in the mitochondrion, takes those pyruvate molecules and through a series or a cycle of reactions, releases a little bit of ATP and some electrons, the high energy electrons that are carried along to the electron transport chain. The third phase, the electron transport chain, also called the ETC for short, takes these electrons and they're passed along as a chain of reactions to a molecule called ATP synthase that produces the most, the bulk of the ATP that is produced from cellular respiration. In the electron transport chain, there are two main processes occurring. Chemiosmosis, which is the production of ATP by the osmosis of hydrogen ions through the membrane, and oxidative phosphorylation, which is the actual formation of the ATP molecules. Phosphorylation means adding a phosphate molecule to something. In class, well, we're going to make a foldable, um, and the outside of the foldable has a mitochondrion diagram. If you're taking notes, having missed notes in class, then you need to get a copy of this worksheet from your teacher. And you need to label the diagram. You need to label the outer membrane, the inner membrane, the Christi, which are the folds, the intermembrane space, and the matrix of the mitochondrion. You can use your book, page 63, to help you label the mitochondrion diagram. On the inside of the foldable, we're going to divide it into three parts. Each section will be about one of the three stages of cellular respiration. As we go along, I'll help you fill in what you need to, what you need to do. That tonight, in this particular set of notes, we're going to do glycolysis, and we'll fill in this section of the foldable. One thing you need to realize is we're talking about cellular respiration. We talked about electrons going through the electron transport chain, but electrons can't travel alone. They always travel with a proton, a hydrogen ion. Um, this, this allows them to be, be passed along without a big change in charge throughout the system. So they're carried on some molecules called NAD and FAD. NAD and FAD are shuttles or carriers for the electrons. They also take the protons along for the ride. They carry the electrons from the Krebs cycle to the, and glycolysis to the electron transport chain. NAD, when it doesn't have the electrons, is really called NAD+. And it can carry two electrons with one proton um, in the form of NADH to the electron transport chain. FAD can carry two electrons with two hydrogen ions, two protons, it will become FADH2. So when you see NAD plus or FAD, that means that it's, they're not carrying the electrons. But when you see NADH or FADH2, 
They are carrying electrons and they're on their way to the electron transport chain to produce most of the ATP. Vocabulary terms you need to know, of course, in the FADH2 and NADH are the electron carrying molecules which carry electrons and their protons to the electron transport chain. The cytosol, which is basically the same thing as cytoplasm, is the solution in cells where some of these reactions occur. And ATP synthase is an enzyme that uses electron energy to put the phosphate, um, add a phosphate to ADP to make ATP. It's a protein that is found in the inner membrane of the mitochondrion, and this is where this process takes place. So where does all this stuff happen? Well, glycolysis occurs in the cytosol or the cytoplasm outside the mitochondria. The Krebs cycle, which is also called the citric acid cycle, occurs in the matrix or the central cavity of the mitochondrion. And the electron transport chain occurs in the inner membrane or the Christi of the mitochondria. The reason these things occur in these places is because these are where the enzymes are found that catalyze the reactions. We've talked about the fact that cells have thousands of different enzymes, each one specific to a particular substrate in a particular reaction. And that's where these, 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 occur, these um, processes occur because that's where the enzymes are found. So glycolysis incur, occurs in the cytosol it, it involves several reactions which break down glucose, that six carbon molecule, and release two NADH to carry some electrons, two pyruvates, which are going to go to the next phase, and four molecules of ATP. If we did, if we did it as a diagram, okay, we have, we have glucose and ATP, two ATPs, going into the process, which occurs in the cytoplasm. And the products are two NADH, two electron transport, two ATPs for the cell to use, and two pyruvates that go to the mitochondrion for the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. This diagram from your book shows the six carbon molecule producing two ATPs of energy, two NADHs, and two molecules of pyruvate. Now, cellular respiration in general is an aerobic process. It requires oxygen. And when oxygen is present, the glucose, one glucose molecule, can go through the whole process to produce 36 to 38 molecules of ATP. That's a substantial uh, production of ATP from one molecule of glucose. Sometimes oxygen is not present. And in that case, that would be called anaerobic respiration. And the anaerobic respiration is two kinds of fermentation alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid fermentation. Both processes occur in different kinds of cells. In alcoholic fermentation, the pyruvate is changed into alcohol plus carbon dioxide plus two molecules of ATP and two NAD pluses. This occurs in organisms called facultative anaerobes, mostly yeast and some kinds of bacteria. Um, because these organisms are facultative because they are both anaerobic and aerobic. They can live with oxygen, they can live without oxygen. They are small microscopic organisms. They don't require a lot of energy and they can get along just fine for long periods of time anaerobically without oxygen. Lactic acid fermentation, which takes the pyruvate and changes it into lactic acid plus ATP plus NADH, occurs in muscle cells, your muscle cells, and certain kinds of fungi. Um, this produces things like that. In fungi, it would produce things like yogurt, sour cream, kimchi, um, sauerkraut, things like that. In your muscle cells, this is what causes muscle cramps when you've exercised too much and used all your oxygen. You can't get along very well with just that little bit of ATP, but the little bit of ATP that's produced from lactic acid fermentation will allow your cells to hang on for a little bit longer until you get more oxygen. In order for the whole process of cellular respiration that produces a lot of ATP, you have to have oxygen present. So here's a diagram that shows you basically fermentation. Okay, If oxygen is present, then the pyruvates go to the Krebs cycle to produce oxygen. If there is no free oxygen, one of two paths, depending on what kind of organism we're talking about, can, can occur. Alcoholic fermentation by yeast and bacteria to produce alcohol and carbon dioxide. Lactic acid fermentation by fungi and muscle cells to produce lactic acid and NAD+. Both processes produce a little bit of ATP, enough for the cell to get by 
until oxygen is available again. These diagrams from your book show the process, the six carbon glucose producing the pyruvate molecules in both cases, okay? When the alcoholic fermentation, the pyruvate releases some carbon dioxide and um, uses the electrons from the NADH that was produced here to produce NAD+, which can be recycled here, to produce two molecules of ethanol or alcohol. This is the kind of alcohol that you find in beer and wine and, and products like that. In um, lactic acid fermentation, same process of glycolysis produces the pyruvate molecules, which then change into two lactate or lactic acid molecules. It also uses the electron energy from the NADH that was produced up here and recycles the NAD to be used the next time there is a molecule of glucose present. Now, in your foldable, we're going to fill in the part about glycolysis. So your, your paper should look something like this. It says glycolysis at the top, and it has some words here. And so you need to complete the parts as, as I tell you to do. So where does this occur? Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm. And what happens in glycolysis, the whole process basically is involves splitting glucose into two pyruvate molecules. The energy produced or used in the reaction it uses two ATPs to get the reaction started and produces four ATPs, which is a net gain of two ATPs for the cell, plus two NADHs that are going to travel to the electron transport chain. When oxygen is not present, fermentation can occur. Two kinds of fermentation. We have alcohol fermentation, which takes the glucose and it changes it to pyruvate, which then becomes, becomes alcohol and two ATPs and NAD plus, plus some carbon dioxide, or lactic acid fermentation, which takes the pyruvate from the glucose and produces lactic acid plus 2 ATP plus, plus NAD plus. And that's the process of glycolysis and anaerobic respiration. We're going to stop this section of notes now. Make sure that you go back and rewind, stop, repeat anything that you need to do to complete your notes on glycolysis.